Welcome to the 30th anniversary of the SJC Boxing Gym in Fort Myers. It's hard to believe. It's a day of appreciation, achievement, thanks, and friendship. Thank you all for coming and celebrating here with us. We really appreciate it. We want to go over some of the history in the gym here as time goes on, but right now we just wanted to do a quick thank you because I know some people have to leave. More are coming. Bob Alexander, our Hall of Fame ring announcer, who started with us years ago, will be here roughly in about an hour. We worked the show in Miami last night, driving from Miami back to Fort Charlotte where it lives and then back here. I'd like to say hello to Hicklet Lau, one of the team freedom fighters from years back, training his son right now. And Hicklet came, we hadn't seen each other in many years, and he was one of my favorites from way back. Bernard Harris from Detroit. Bernard Harris, one of the boxing champions in this gym. Reunion time. Bernard Harris. Thanks. David Diamond D. Armstrong is here. It was a teammate. Woo! Yeah. I want to say hello and a special thank you to Larry Willis. Larry has done a fabulous job here in the city. Years back, we were together when the program was closed down by the city, and we restarted it. And when Powell gave, came back in the business, Larry became the Powell coach and did a great job with Powell. And he's still doing a great job with the kids, and the friendship is great. So we appreciate it. And Quentin is here now. Marcus is be coming sometime. They were barely in diapers when we started. And now they are adults teaching and mentoring young kids and being a great inspiration to others. And this is what I like about this sport. The fact that we've had world champions from here is great, but that's not as important as the people who never even boxed, but they came in here and bettered themselves physically, mentally, and health-wise, and got, became better people because they learned dedication and sacrifice and determination builds success, and they can achieve their dreams through hard work, and grades in school got better, and instead of quitting school, they graduated and did well, went on to college. Those are the stories that we like. We like stories about uh, Justin here, for example, was a high school wrestler, plays music professionally on Tuesday nights downtown by the hotel, motel six, uh, room six. Hotel Indigo, yeah. <laughs> Next to downtown house of the, House of Pizza. Comes in here, he lost 78 pounds. Nice. And still, and helps the guys in the gym. People like Ricky Burgos, came in a gym at 33 years old, never boxed before, didn't know he wanted to. Started boxing, and Ricky, in his first year in boxing, he won a state championship, and he won a national championship. He's got a 4-0 record. The opposition has a record of 28 wins, four losses, and 20 wins by knockout. And that's Ricky. And he now helps young kids in the gym. He spearheaded the gym cleanup last night. Yay, Ricky. Did a great job on that. There's so many more we're going to be thanking. John LaMarker was one of our great helpers back in the day. He ran the amateur program here with SJC. He helped in the corner, did many shows together. And John is here. And Bobby, retired policeman from Rochester, part year resident. Great person, mentor to the kids, comes in and trains, does a great job. I just see uh, Charlie Walker in here. Charlie over there was uh, in the Army. He was a uh, private. He gets out, now he's a captain. He has a charter boat. He started boxing. Never had a hook, but he's got a bunch of hooks in his tackle box. <laughs> he's almost got it together, but we, got, we like Charlie. He comes in and does a great job. and. Uh, if you need any charters, he's the one to see. Thank you. Okay. We just want to have fun, a day of appreciation, thanks. But we're going to be talking some more, and I can't wait till Bob gets here. He talks more than I do and better than I do. Uh, we're also going to have a 10 count for some of the people that we lost. One of the greats that many know, Jimmy Williams. Jimmy Williams was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2009, the inaugural year. One of the great trainers, one of the great people in boxing. A uh, great legacy. He wanted to be here. He passed away yesterday. And uh, we're missing him terribly already. Uh, 
you know, that's the hard part of life. You know, you took look at an anecdote. If you're playing baseball and you're rounding third heading for home, that's a good thing. In a game of life, if you're rounding third heading for home, that's not so good. It's all perspective. But we want to appreciate and let everyone know how much we do appreciate and thank for being here, being part of it, making it work, and hope that we keep on going for many years to come. So we'll get back with you afterwards. Enjoy. You may remember two weeks ago, one of the all-time greats from Panama, Hall of Famer Eusebio Pedrosa died. He had cancer. I knew he was sick, but I didn't know he was towards the end. Eusebio Pedrosa was a great fighter. He was a good friend. His birthday was going to be on Saturday, the next day. I was getting ready to wish him a happy birthday on that Saturday. I found out on that Friday he passed away from cancer. And it was a hard time, a hard day to cope with the fact that another friend has died. And it bothered me all day. I come to the gym that Friday night and this 14 year old kid walks in the gym and he says, I want to sign up. I want to start boxing. So we questioned him, have you ever boxed before? No. Ever played any other sports? No. Yeah, sure. Then why do you want to box? Yes, sir. He said, I really don't know. I had this feeling all day today. I woke up and something told me I wanted to box. I wanted to learn how to fight. I wanted to be a boxer. It bothered me all day long. So I looked up and I saw the gym address and I came to sign up. And I want to sign up. And Oscar Montillo was sitting here and he says, do you live around here to the kid? And he said, actually, no, I live in Lehigh. So he looked around, there was no car. He said, did you get dropped off for a ride? He said, no, I got on my bicycle for an hour and a half and came from Lehigh. So then the guy goes, the kid says, uh, how much is gym dues? And I said, $50. He reached in his pocket and he had $50 exactly in his pocket. Didn't know gym dues with $50. Didn't even know he had much money in his pocket, but he had the exact amount of money. And I said, well, if you want to just train tonight and pay later, since that's all the money you have right now, that would be fine. Kid says, no. He says, I'm here. I want to sign up. I got the money. I want to pay for it right now. So he signed up, paid his $50. I'm looking at the paper. His name is Eusebio Montoya. This GM is 30 years old. I've never had anyone named Eusebio. On the day that Eusebio Pedrosa died, Eusebio Montoya shows up that night. Montoya is 14 years old. Pedrosa started boxing in Panama when he was 14 years old. He never boxed before. He never played any sports before. He just had a feeling one day that he wanted to box, and he started boxing at the age of 14. Had a brief amateur career, turned pro, was an all-time great. Made 19 successful defenses of his world title in the Hall of Fame, and an all-time great. Sabio Montoya was 14 years old, never played sports, had a strange feeling all day, he needed to learn how to box. Comes here, has the exact amount of money in his pocket for Jim to do, signs up, and then I look at him, and Eusebio Pedrosa, when he was world champion, the favorite boxing gloves that he wore was a Mexican brand glove, which is no longer made, Montoya boxing gloves. I got a picture of Eusebio Pedrosa wearing his Montoya boxing gloves. And I showed it to this Eusebio Montoya, who's now 14, who started here in the gym on that day. That's such an eerie story. And then yesterday in the gym, Eusebio tells me that he has this feeling that Eusebio Pedrosa is his guardian angel watching over him. Nah, unreal. That's some of the things that's here. Pinklin Thomas. Pinklin Thomas, you all know, as heavyweight champ of the world. Close friend, been in this gym many times. Wanted to be here, but he got in trouble with DJ, his wife, because it's also their anniversary. And, his, and she didn't want to be here even though he was going to come. But what's also important and interesting is the fact that as close as we have been all these years, as many times as we've been together with various functions, we just realized that today, 30 years at the gym, birthday is today, Stinklin Thomas got out of rehab 30 years ago today. He's 30 years sober today as the gym celebrates 30 years anniversary. And now he's mentoring kids with his Project Pink in Orlando. So he says, Thanks to everyone, too, and uh, they'll be here with us next time. Anyway, I wanted to get those things on to you, too. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Today, 
It's been a great day for everybody. Friendship, loyalty, and appreciation for 30 years of boxing. Uh, when we start, we're going to talk about a few of our members and friends who are no longer with us that meant a lot to the gym. Brian Boyle, former attorney, mentor to many guys here, one of our sponsors, passed away a couple of years ago, age 56 of brain cancer. He's been missed. We had uh, Ernesto Romero. Bob remembers him as a young amateur fighter. Larry, you probably remember Ernesto Romero at Cape Coral. Was a young amateur in our program, not doing too well in school when he started. They ended up getting A's and B's. Graduated high school. Went to college. No, I'm sorry. Graduated high school. Went in the army. Served his time. Came out and was all excited after his discharge because he was engaged to get married. He was accepted to go to college and was going to come back in the gym on that Monday. And it was a Friday he was visiting. On that Sunday he was hit by a drunken driver and killed. So he was he's missed and thought of. Charlie Pichette was a longtime sponsor here and promoter of many of our pro shows throughout the years. Passed away in August, age 91. John Mitchell, one of our early trainers and a former pro boxer, when we were all together years back and started together, and Larry, Octavio Soto, Joe, uh, Joe Taylor, Joe Taylor, and and John Mitchell, we were all working with the kids as a family back then, and it was a great era. And John was killed and murdered back then, actually, and we missed him. And John Mitchell also John played Mitchell. for the University of Miami. Yes. And at the same time, after the program was gone, was getting along great, then the PAL program came back in existence, and Larry went and did a fabulous job with PAL for many years, uh, which is great. So that's the beginning of that. And we also want to talk about, briefly, Dave Miller and Ronnie Lane from Bill Brand Chevrolet. Big sponsors of us, and our start was outside in the parking lot there. We set up a ring, and we had exhibitions, and we had catered food in there. We had a fabulous day and at that event a guy named Bob Ellis handed us keys to a building downtown and said move in there and set up a gym which we did. That was back then so uh, we want to talk about that. We had a very dear friend that passed away too yesterday who wanted to be here with us. I'm going to give the uh, mic over to Bob because Bob also knew him well. We were all close for many years. He did a take down yesterday. We want to do that. Now. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, a lot of you know that uh, we just lost Jimmy Williams at the age of 90 at the end of the week. 91, I'm sorry. Yes, he was 91. Um, I first met Jimmy at the uh, what used to be the, the roadway in down here off 41 before I even started ring announcing. It was about 1988, I think. And uh, he was training John the Beast Mugabe at that time, who fought here in Fort Myers. And uh, Jimmy was just, uh, I mean, he was a legend. Uh, born in Leesburg here in Florida, moved to New York City, became a, an actor, a model, and a dancer for many years up in Manhattan. Came back to Florida in the 60s and started training boxers. Went to work for uh, Alessi up in Tampa. And of course, trained countless fighters some great champions like uh, Lloyd Hunnigan, John Mugabe, uh, Antonio Tarver, of course, Boza Edwards. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Jimmy was, as you all probably know, he was a great teacher, but he was a great friend of people. He just loved people. All the way up until the end, as, as those of you that were here in January when we did the Hall of Fame announcement, Jimmy was here and the line was beat several people deep all the time. Everybody wanted to see him. Everybody wanted to talk to him. And thank God we had him here, at least for that, uh, because it was special being with him. And all of us who knew him know that our time with him was very special. Jimmy was inducted in the very first class of the Hall of Fame, the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame in Tampa back in 2009, along with Steve. And, uh, he was just a, a very special individual, and he will be greatly missed. So at this time, oh, Ezra Sellers is another one Steve wanted to remember, one of the uh, guys that Steve worked with, former world champion, um, 
just a, a tremendous fighter. And uh, I know Steve has a lot of great memories about Ezra and all the great things he accomplished. So he's another one. But all the guys Steve mentioned, Jimmy, Ezra included, we're going to have Steve do a, uh, a 10 count at this time. So a moment of silence, please. souls rest in peace. Thank you very much. Uh, this time I want to make a special announcement. We were hoping and planning on having a very special guest with us, Pinklin Thomas, the former heavyweight champion of the world from Orlando, um, in the class of uh, 2009 along with Steve and uh, Jimmy. Pinklin, uh, well, this week is celebrating, what, the 30th? 22. 22. 22? And the anniversary. Wedding His wedding anniversary, 22 years to the lovely DJ. And uh, the thought was them to come down here, but uh, in the end, the DJ decided she wanted to keep have Pinklin all to herself, and you can't blame her for that. So uh, they weren't able to make it, but Pinklin wanted to pass on to everybody. This is very, very special. The very same week, same day, same day, the very same day, March 23rd, 1989, is the day that the SJC gym opened its doors for the first time. That was the very same day that Pinklin Thomas was released from rehab after fighting years of addiction. He was released from rehab on that day, and he has been clean and sober ever since. Same day. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So Pink wanted to pass that on. He wanted to pass all his best to everybody. Thank everybody for all their support of Steve and his gym and, and the fighters. And uh, of course, Pinklin will be there at the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame in June. And we certainly hope uh, as many of you can come and join us for that as possible. I'm going to turn it back over to Steve who has some more announcements. Okay, I also wanted to mention that uh, Mark Lanton here has written a couple of Christian-based books that are fabulous. I've read them. I've got them. And they're here. He's got some for book signings. Uh, and I will say this. You buy a book and you read it, you will be inspired. Well-written, great Christian-based books. And Mark has got some of those with him. And if you want to get a couple of them and uh, enjoy reading something that's important and inspiring, you will not be disappointed. Uh, I've got my book over here too, by the way, if you want any of those, I'd be glad to sign a couple of those to you. Uh, the book that I wrote was about, mostly about people who did great deeds outside of the sport. Uh, instead of writing about someone everyone else has written about, most of these people in the book were good fighters or decent fighters, but they did great deeds outside the sport. We want to remember them for that. A lot of rare pictures in the book. Anyways, they're there for you. Also, we have a donation jar if you want to put a few dollars in there would be helpful because we're trying to keep the gym afloat. 30 years passed, now we want to look to the future. And again, one last thing I want to say. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for being part of 30 years of celebration. It's just so hard to believe and I'm so happy to have old friends back in the building again and seeing people for the first time in a long time. So, thank you. gym has meant to them, feel free to come on up. We'd be glad to give you just a minute or two and just talk about how the gym has impacted your life or how you feel about the gym or any words you want to say. We want to share that with our friends. So come on up if there is anyone. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, yeah. You know everybody was looking at you. Yeah, <laughs> Now I'm David Armstrong. I used to, I used to fight for my um, Steve Jim. I'm a little, I'm alright. I'm alright. <laughs> right. But no, I just, you know, when I came over to Steve Jim, it was a good deal. So, like you young fighters in here, just keep, you know, just keep striving, just keep doing what you're doing, and just listen to everybody. And it should be, I can't really say. Really, I, I really, I had my time. I, I had my days of fighting. I had my time to fight. 
I had an accident where I'm just hanging out, trying to prevent a fight, and I ended up getting shot. So it kind of like threw me kind of out the game. So they put a rod in my arm, so they say I never swing my arm again, but I'm here. You know, I thank God I'm still here, but this, this is where I started at, and I'm okay. I'm okay with it. So it's all right. So I, like you young fighters, just keep striding, man, and stay out the streets. <laughs> you got to stay out the streets. Thank you, baby. Diamond D on the show. This is a special treat for me, too. Bernard Harris is from Detroit, still lives in Detroit. He was in his gym, part of a great team back in the 90s. Won a couple of world titles. Went back to Detroit. He's inspiring guys up in Detroit right now. And he took a little vacation to be here with everybody today. And it's a great blessing to see him. Bob Alexander went all the way to the Bahamas to commentate and call his world title winning fight in the Bahamas. Yeah, I'm from Detroit. Too. And he's from Detroit also. <laughs> so it's a great family. And Bernard, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, words can't really explain. Um, <laughs> I'm not the best speaker, but um, I got a gym in the city. More City of Detroit called it Detroit Boxing Jungle. I promoted amateur shows and professional boxing shows. Um, I love to mentor the kids. I try to tell everyone to stay positive. Um, it's not easy. Boxing is a hard sport. You know, you got a lot of people that's on the outside that say, oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? And never do a punch in their life. <laughs> but um, I'm blessed to be here. And see all my old friends. I got the champions over here. I got Freeman. I got Diamond D. So, yeah! <laughs> Steve Cannon. And um, it's funny because I, I dreamed this. It's like I was getting ready for a fight and I got the call from Emmanuel and Steve Cannon said, It's a fight. You can take this fight. And nobody believed in me and Steve Cannon did. And I'm just blessed to be here to see everybody and meet everybody. And the best is yet to come. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Freeman, come on up here and say a few words. Freeman, the natural bar, came here from the Bahamas, wanted to be a world champion, and did. What did you do with Bear Show? <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Bo. I remember I came here. I'm going to get Mark on the computer. He's a guy from Fort Lauderdale. I mean, Tony McLean. Yeah, he used to bring fighters when he used to run out fight. And I told him, he said, I, I want to go to, to Florida, you know, to fight in my boxing career. So uh, I told him I have a friend living in Naples, and I'll go I'll go to Naples. And he told me to go see Kathy, he gave me his number. And uh, I came in, in, I think it was Christmas Eve, 94. But I didn't get to the gym until about summertime. And the first time I come to the gym, and I met Steve, I want to show Steve uh, exactly what I made out of. So I, I picked Richard Council, which I was in training for a while. He beat me up, he gave me a good one, you know. But I just show, TV, you know, show Steve my mental toughness and my physical toughness. So we started getting shape and he gave me my fight fight. And I, I went by a knockout. And we keep on climbing the ladder, climbing the ladder. We started going all about Miami. Everyone, every time I go to Miami, it's the wake up with the good guys. You know, when you go to Miami, you spot the tough guy, the tough ten guy. They used to wonder, hey, who, who's that new guy? So you know who he's spotting with? He's spotting with a tough ten fighter. All the time I was a rookie, you know. But just I could adjust to any fighter you put me in the ring with. That's the mindset I had, and and, and that's that's what make me a better fighter because the. My, my way of thinking, believe no one could beat me. And that's what a lot of you, you young fighters have to do today, believe, hey, no one out there can beat you. you. You're the best. You have to believe you're the best. You can't believe you're not the best. And that's the way me, Bernard, David, and that's the way we think about ourselves. That's why we began to be successful. Now, <clears throat> all those years I was fighting with a long disease called sarcoidosis, what I didn't know about. 
and I, and, and I'll tell Steve sometimes I don't feel right in the ring. But one, but one thing to me, I never quit. I was sick and I continued to fight. And when I did get diagnosed with sacrifices, the doctor told me, hey, I don't know how you did it all those times, but I want you to quit. And I'm, I'm a stubborn guy. I didn't listen to him. I went over there for, for three more fights, and I win. But Dr. Show, show the fighters today. I was not 100 percent, and I win those fights. The guys who who 100 percent healthy and physically, the ball is in your hand. All you gotta go go there, train hard, and you'll get there. Never give up. Never quit. Continue striving and continue pushing. And believe me, you'll get there. Thank you, Freeman. Coach Larry Willis, come on up here, Larry. We go back a lot of years, and I'm just so happy to have him part of the celebration today. His sons were all practically in diapers when we started, and I'm so proud of how Marcus and Quentin turned out, grew up, and now they're mentoring young kids behind them. And Larry is the father of the whole family, and I'm so proud to have him a friend all this time. And thank you for being here, too. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Steve. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, I was honored when I got the phone call last week to come and be a part of the, part of the celebration. And uh, I don't know uh, how many coaches we actually have in here, anybody that's ever coached. Uh, this is not an easy game. I mean, you know, you got to have a passion to do this. To be a fighter, you got to have a passion. To be a coach, you got to have a passion. Especially when you're coaching day in and day out, you open the gym. And my hat's off for Steve because Steve, me and Steve started together really. We started coaching together. Uh, Steve was coaching long before I was, but when Steve came to Fort Myers, uh, he invited me to come and help him open the gym. But we started at the uh, Shady Oaks, no, at the National Guard Army. And uh, we got kicked out of the National Guard Army. I don't know what the situation was. I think it was money, you know, most times you get kicked out because you're not paying the rent or don't have the money to pay the rent. But, if you can take a group of kids and coach them in the parking lot, on a baseball field, whatever it takes, we've done that. Uh, I always named my gym the homeless boxing gym a couple of times. We were kicked out so many times. But the thing is, you got to have a passion to do this. you got to have the love for the kids and love for the sport. And that's what, you know, that's what boxing is all about. You know, I have people say to me all the time, you get these guys, they can get in the ring and beat the crap out of each other, but then have more love than anybody else. We, I mean, boxers have more love and more passion than anybody. I mean, it's kind of crazy the way it works out. But, I mean, you know, God has a sense of humor. I mean, these guys can beat the brakes off each other. Now, David Armstrong was the only one that threatened to shoot, it, shoot Marcus or Quentin after a sparring session. You know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're going way back. Like Steve said, we go way back. And I don't want him to tell how long ago this was because then I thought about it. It has been a long time, so that means, you know, somebody's getting old. <laughs> but, uh, but we really, you know, we enjoyed the ride to where we're at. Now, I mean, you know, uh, Steve's had a lot of guys, had guys that fight for world titles. Uh, Marcus had a couple of title fights. Uh, right now, his brother Quinn's getting ready to fight in two weeks. Uh, but, you know, it's about the work that you put in. And you young guys, it's not going to be given to you. Everything that you get, not only the boxing, anything you get in life, anything you earn in life, You've got to work for it. You've got to work for it. Uh, a man here mentioned, mentioned uh, uh, Emmanuel Stewart. I heard you mention Emmanuel Stewart. What a legend in boxing. Uh, I was with uh, what's the Sugar Hill. I was with Sugar Hill a couple of weeks ago in Minneapolis. I remember him when he's, you know, I just see him at the national tournaments all the time. But these guys, you see them, you travel around the country at the amateurs, the pro level, and you see these guys that's always there, always doing something. Some of the guys have made the big money, running shields. He's got money rest running out of his pockets and everything. Me and Steve, we haven't made it yet, but we, we do it from, from the heart. We do it from the passion, for the love and everything. I, I've never, I was telling someone this morning, I've never made enough money in one month to pay the rent. I've always had to come out of my 401k money and my pension money to do it. I've never made money out of boxing. But... I wouldn't change anything. I would keep doing it day after day after day because I love the sport and I love the camaraderie, being around the people. I remember Freeman when he was like, you know, uh, he was like another few pounds lighter. <laughs> uh, I, I remember David, as a matter of fact, a lot of y'all don't know this. Me and David Armstrong, uh, David's first amateur fight, 
I fought on the same card. David was 15 years old, and we fought on the same card together at the National Guard Army. And uh, I actually fought another kid named David, a uh, kid from New York, but that was his first amateur fight. Andre Berto. Andre Berto's first amateur fight was a show that Steve did at Bay Oaks Rec Center. Andre Burrow was 11 years old, 95 pounds, and he beat Wilbur Walmart on it. Yeah, Wilbur. Yeah, yeah, and Wilbur wanted to fight him again after the fight. I said, now let's leave the party. In the party, yeah. <laughs> In the party like this. Huh? My first fight was on that car. Marcus' first fight. Marcus fought a kid from uh, Mike Stafford's gym out of Cincinnati, was a national silver glove champion. Billy Smith. And his first fight, Billy Smith. Billy, Billy was a national Billy champion. Simmons, yeah. And that was his first, his yeah. first amateur fight. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, I just, you know, I just got to say, you know, it, it, what Steve is doing is great things. I mean, this, the boxing, there's so much love in beating somebody, punching somebody in the mouth. There's so much love in it, you know. <laughs> okay. That's all I can say. But it's a, I mean, it's a camaraderie. It's a, boxers have more love and compassion than anybody else. But I just got to, my hat's off to Steve because Steve has done a lot of stuff. I wish he would start doing some more pro fights. Uh, that's another thing we got to talk about. But this man always did great shows at the Harborside. But uh, I'm just proud to be here. I'm honored to be here, and I thank you, Bob Alexander. I met Bob in Park Warner football. Uh, his son and my son played against each other in Park Warner football, so that was always our toughest game with Charlotte. But we'll we'll talk about that another later. time. Y'all yeah. cheat. <laughs> y'all have to. Y'all paid the officials off. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, I'm gonna give the mic back to Steve. Uh, so, uh, but it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm proud to be here. Thank you, Larry. Always proud to be here. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for the great things you've done. I want to bring him. Hicklet Lau. Hicklet, I remember as a young amateur with high, from Hialeah coming up fighting on our shows as a young person, and I always loved him from day one. He turned into an excellent pro, was mismanaged with his career, but was a great fighter with skills, and he's a great person. He's got a son he's bringing along right now, and uh, Hicklet, I was honored to have him drive up here today to be part of the 30-year celebration because it's been a lot of years since we saw each other. He still looks the same, though, but not me. Well, it was a pleasure, pleasure to be invited here today. Uh, the biggest, furthest memory I have is coming down with the Hialeah team and fighting Macho Camacho Jr. Hector Camacho Jr. Um, was a great fight. I was glad Steve was able to organize that. And actually, we fought the Sunshine Network after that. Yeah. Um, after that, I went ahead and turned pro. Had about 43 professional fights. Got a couple of TV fights and all. It was a pleasure um, being a boxer. I just want to tell young, oh, young kids here, if you box, that all you got to do is train hard, take care of yourself, because after I fought 42 professional fights, although I didn't become a world champion, I got a lot of TV exposure. I went on to go to college after that. I got a bachelor's degree, and I work with children. I train my son, who's right there, 15 years old. And you can accomplish a lot of things and let people scare you off, say, oh, you gotta be punch drunk after boxing or whatnot. All you gotta do is train hard and listen to your coaches, and you can have a, a successful life right after after boxing. Don't let the the talk hearsay go um, go around talking about oh, you end up like Muhammad Ali or whatnot. Boxing is a great sport. It'll, it'll keep you out of trouble. It'll, it'll build character within you, your, your your children, and it's a great sport. And once again, I want to thank Steve for inviting me. It was a pleasure coming out here and catching up with a lot of people I haven't seen in a lot of years. And even though I've been away from boxing for a while, I'm back now with my son and passing on everything I know and everything I learned throughout the years. Thank you all. Thank you, Marcus. Marcus, you know, you're going he showed his greatness in his first amateur fight when he was young, going against a national champion from Cincinnati. And he's been great ever since. It, it, it was great to start with, and it's been greater ever since. And I'm proud of the person he's grown into. He's a, he's a role model, he's a good person, and uh, proud to be a friend. Thank you, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Mark Willis. Uh, I remember my first moments in Steve's gym. I know we, we I started boxing, I was in the gym in, di in diapers. Uh, <laughs> And then I think at the age of eight, that's when my dad started coaching with SJC. And uh, I may have been seven or eight when we started. I think I was seven. Yeah, when we started, because we were yeah, I was seven. Yeah, but my first fight, um, I was eight years old, fought a kid with 20 amateur fights. I was nine years old from uh, Cincinnati. Uh, Billy Smith, I'll never, I'll never forget him that. But, um, you know, I remember days of being in that gym, you know, old school. Uh, we didn't have a roof. We had pigeons pooping yep. in the ring, pooping, like I remember my older brother Larry, he was stretching, 
had a pigeon poop on his lip. And, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, don't look exactly. Something's coming down. You look up. But uh, <laughs> it's definitely a testament in, in boxing. You don't want to be looking up. Um, so we uh, like just that foundation and what we uh, built. You know, as, as young kids, and I'm running, you know, mile, two mile runs with the with the uh, pros and the older adults and everything. So it, it definitely builds character and builds a foundation um, to be a fighter. And uh, you have a, a lot of a lot of people to learn from, look up to, um, and build a relationship with that last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, so uh, it, it, boxing, it gives you a lot of opportunities, uh, a lot of relationships, life, life lasting relationships. Um, I've had 125 amateur fights. And... Uh, 108 and 17, um, been ranked number two in the nation, top 10 uh, from 04 to 08. Uh, 26 professional fights, been on ESPN, uh, Showtime, HBO, uh, Telemundo, and uh, Pay Per View. Um, so boxing can take you a lot of different ways in different places. And uh, I've actually been to Tokyo uh, for a training camp. So if, if you have the talent and the ability um, and the diligence to, to be in this sport, you know, it can take you a lot of ways. Just stay focused, um, stay respectful to your coaches, and, you know, put that work in, and boxing and definitely build um, a lot of lasting memories. So, uh, and it all started, you know, from the beginning, you know, with, with Steve and my dad, you know, putting, putting that work in and, and giving back to these kids. So. Okay, what are some of the biggest names, the biggest things that you've you won over in amateur boxing? Uh, the biggest names that I've fought in amateur boxing, um, well, the biggest name that I've beaten in amateur boxing is Earl Spence. Uh, I beat Earl Spence uh, back in 2008. Uh, 2008. 2008. Um, and uh, I beat him with a spider bite on my leg. Like, I had a spider bite on my leg. I could barely move. And... Uh, I, the, the fighter that Earl is today, I didn't think that he would be, you know. 2007. <laughs> yeah. Listen, stay over there. Who got the mic? It's his turn, Dad. Come on. You were but, younger when you beat him, and you think. Yes, yeah, so I was younger. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I, I fought, you know, Keith Thurman three times. Me and Keith the spar, you know, multiple times. Um, never beat Keith, but I beat Keith. Beat Every time we fought, beat him in California. You know, um, so it didn't get decision that, that I deserve, um, you know, which happened in boxing and uh, um, fought Danny Jacobs in the under 19 nationals in 04. Um, fought him, uh, lost to a, lost a uh, national championship to him. Real close fight, one of my my favorite fights because I learned a lot in that fight. And it was as I'm fighting Danny, I'm like you know analyzing him and actually like being a fan of us fighting each other and you know it, it was a very good experience um fighting danny jacobs but uh boxing will definitely put you in the ring and with, with you know different top caliber opponents and you like know billy smith. yeah <laughs> but uh um, yeah billy smith i'll never forget that name you know definitely national champion, national champion. He, 20 fights my first fight you know but um uh it is definitely it's, it's built character and camaraderie and relationships that will never end. So, thank you. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Uh, want to bring Ricky Burgos up here. Ricky Burgos, I remember walking into this gym a year ago. And he told me he was too old to fight. I said, how old are you? He said, 33. I said, no, you're not 33. You're 17 with 16 extra years experience. <laughs> He liked that, and he started training here. And then he decided he wanted a box. And the first fighter he got in the ring against was 5-0 and with five knockouts. And Ricky beat him, knocked him out. He ended up winning state gold medal, national championship, for Sugar. And he's got a 4-0 official record. The opposition that he beat to be 4-0 is 28 wins, four losses, and 20 wins by knockout. And that's his first year. Oh, man. So now he's another year younger. He's now 16 with 18 years experience. There you go. There's Ricky Burgos. And also, by the way, I want a special thank you to Ricky because he spearheaded cleaning the gym up and making it presentable for today. That's great. Thank you so much. That's a good with uh, speaking, but uh, this place has done a lot for me. And uh, I never thought that I would come in here and do what I'm doing. It's 
uh, it's a blessing to find that uh, I had a gift. I didn't know what was in there. And uh, it was funny because first I was looking for Larry's gym and uh, couldn't find it because I'm new to the area. And on my way home, I, uh, I stopped in a building here and uh, just walked into the door. And my gym's a 41. Yeah, yeah, but it's funny. I'm like, where is this place? Where is this place? But regardless, um, uh, the, the good thing is I'm still stuck with both of them. Uh, hanging out with Larry today. Uh, he invited me to his gym, which means that I am doing something good. And um, now, re uh -huh. refine it. Now tell him what the, I invite you to spar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, make it put the icing on the cake. Yeah, no, uh, no, no. Just let him know that I invited you to spar. Oh, invited. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're all family, so uh, yeah, I invited you to spar. Yeah, he, he invited me to come down and spar with uh, one of his great uh, uh, professional guys. Twenty-one years old, right? He's twenty-two years old. Oh, twenty-two years old, and uh, you know, I, I'm happy to be around that. And that's what this boy has been doing for me. So, uh, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I'm, I'm listen, I appreciate the work. Man. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. One last thing I want to bring up tonight today is a very close friend, a guy I'm proud to be around, to know, associate with, Mark Lanton. Mark was a <coughs> amateur Army world champion, professional, keynote speaker at the Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame inductee, author, and a great friend, Mark Lanton. I just want to congratulate SJC Boxing for you know, 30 years of service to the community. You know, if it wasn't places like this, you know, you know, me growing, I grew up in New York and I started boxing when I was 10 years old and, you know, it was places like this that, that was like a sanctuary to me because this is where I came after school and I learned how to box and it kept me out of trouble. And, um, you know, instead of me breaking windows or, you know, starting fires, which was a habit of mine, you know, I was in the boxing gym, you know, learning something, construction and doing something constructive. So I'm thankful for places like, like this and Steve Kenton, you know, to um, to offer this kind of service to the community, and I, and I, I just hope that, you know, the, the area recognizes this that this is an asset and, and it should be used to its fullest potential because, you know, boxing gyms in in areas like this, you know, are, are like gold because it 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 just helps so many young people and, and, and redirects a lot of paths of people who could have you know, gone the wrong direction like me. You know, I joined the Army when I was 18 years old uh, to get out of New York and, um, and I became an Army boxer and an Army champ and did a lot of things in boxing in the Army and then I ended up turning pro in the Roy Jones camp. And that's when I met Steve, you know, we crossed paths back in the back in, uh, in the 90s when I, when I was fighting pro you know, in Roy's camp and, um, and we we stayed in touch over the years and you know, we all know the same people because boxing is a, is a small world so you know we all know the same people and you know, we crossed paths uh, many times and we didn't even know each other and we ended up connecting you know eventually we ended up you know connecting and um and reacquainting with with each other but i just want to congratulate sjc for all these decades of serving the community and you know i'm looking forward to 30 more years where um you know you know this place will hopefully just blossom and, and and get the credit and recognition that it deserves. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to still refreshments to eat, donation jar to fill up, books to sign for Mark. I've got a couple. And uh, thank you very much. And we still got some time to hang out. Do some stuff if you want, but we, we appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Bob Alexander. Bob is the, I'll say this many times and I'll keep saying it as long as I'm alive. And he's making it basically, he knows what I'm going to say. That's the best announcer in all of boxing. And he's the best, one of the best friends that ever was. And I've never done a show and never would do a show without him being available to be the announcer. Exactly, exactly. I would rather change my date to fit his schedule and not have the show or find someone else. Exactly. So that's the way it is. Uh, but thank you for coming out here. He worked a show in Miami last night. He drove all the way back home and drove down here mm -hmm. to be with us today. So that's appreciated. And everyone here that came from a long ways, and even the people that came from a short distance, they found their way here. Ricky couldn't find his, uh, the gym across the street. <laughs> but everybody found their way here eventually. We appreciate that. That was funny. <laughs> Thank you. Good Thank job. You. Good job. Good job. Good job.